Thanks, uh, Charles. So today, uh, I mean, first of all, is I'd like to thank the organizer for allowing me to talk uh, today. Unfortunately, I can only attend online, but uh, it's, it's a very nice workshop. I have the opportunity to listen to very nice talks, uh, a lot of interesting work. So I'm, I'm quite happy to be here and to, to give a presentation about my work. So today, I'm going to talk about uh, convergence of Nash equilibria. Particularly, I will talk about the, the case of uh, closed loop control. To put it simple here in this talk, my, the, the main point will be to try to understand how the possible limit of Nash equilibria in the framework where there is a common noise and also there is an interaction through the empirical distribution of, of state and control. And all of that, we want to do that considering with assumptions as weak as possible. Namely here, we only consider the coefficients to be only, I mean, lip sheets and continuous. There is no need for differentiability or something like convexity or something like that. We only consider lip sheets and continuity. So as some of you have already guessed here, I will mainly use compactification techniques to try to deal with uh, the convergence of Nash equilibria. Well, I mean, I think uh, everybody here knows that there is two main techniques to use to, I mean, to deal with uh, the convergence of Nash equilibria. There is compactification, of course, and there is also the master equation. But here in my talk, I will only focus on compactification method. And this uh, this talk will be very close related to the work of uh, Dan Laker. Also, there is some more link uh, with our work. So I will essentially use compactification method here. So just to, to put the outline, I mean, don't you worry about uh, the here, it, there is no thousand slides. I uh, just, uh, just don't think, I, I mean, just a mistake. I couldn't remove it, so, but there is no thousand slides. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I'm going to talk about, uh, the, I'm going to talk about, I mean, I will give a definition what I mean by closed loop. And naturally, when we talk about closed loop, not far away, there is open loop. So I will uh, try to, I believe everybody here knows a lot about uh, this one, but I, in order to, to be on the same page, give a quick reminder of what I call closed loop and what I call open loop. And naturally, in the situation where, I mean, I put myself in the situation where the, 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 the Nash equilibria will be related to the minifield game of this game problem. So I will give, I mean, I'm going to have a little discussion about uh, the, how the, the definition we can consider here to deal with the convergence of Nash equilibria. So I will talk about strong solution of Milky game. I also, because we need it, I am going to talk about a weak solution of Milky game. And I will finish this first part by talking about, by giving an heuristic about how to derive the convergence result. In the second part, I will actually take a little bit of time talking about how we can prove actually the result. I mean, don't you worry, I won't, uh, don't go into actually explicit all the proof, I'm just only to focus on one specific aspect of the proof, namely the, what we call the convergence, the, the converse convergence results. And now we talk about the literature, what is done about that, in the, what is the current literature in, the, in this setting. And I will try to show how we can I improve some, I mean, start to overcome some difficulties that appear in this, uh, in this situation. So now let's talk about, uh, wait, let's talk about the framework here. It's kind of quite uh, simple. So what I call Nash equilibrium here. So 
I give myself a uh, tuple of controls, so n controls, and uh, I consider some uh, stochastic differential equation here. I did not like this. So one of the main points I will uh, very, I mean, all, during how the talk, I will very, I mean, I will point out this thing, this fact. So I consider common noise here, I did not by B, and uh, the interaction between the player uh, achieved via the empirical distribution of state and controls. And I consider the reward of player under this kind of shape. It's a very, uh, I mean, it's kind of sim simple. I mean, we can do a little bit general than, than this one, but uh, I'm just uh, going to consider this one to, uh, this, uh, this framework already has some features interesting features, so I will only stay here. So naturally, this is a definition of Nash Bayon. We, we consider especially approximate Nash Bayon. So this one is actually well known. So here the framework is quite um, formal. There's no many details, especially about the control. So here, as I said, I'm going to focus essentially on open loop and closed loop. So now what I mean by open loop after all, so it's, I mean, as I, I say already, I believe many people here know that. So what I mean by open loop is uh, so alpha i will be a map of, first of all, I mean, there is a time, of course, and there is all the initial, all the, the initial distribution and the Brian motion we consider here and the Cominos B. And the thing is here in the case of, of open loop, one player deviates, so the, the deviating players, if the deviating player is high, so when you replace half high by another control beta, of course there is the, the, the position of the state uh, is going to move. And the consequences of this move will be, first of all, I mean, I only consider the, the, the first step, what I mean by that, say, and only consider, I, I forgot about the, 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 the optimization problem for, for now. I'm just uh, going to look at what is uh, the consequence of this move at the first step. What, what is going to happen when you move? So the change, so through the empirical distribution with new capital N here, all the states are going to move, of course. But the main point here is there is no changes over the other controls. How the other controls are only functions, function of the initial distribution, the initial, the, the initial point in the, the Brian motion, there is no, at first, at least, there is no move for the other control. And this is not the case for the closed loop part. Actually, in the case of closed loop, so we consider alpha high, to be a map of the time, of course, and there is uh, the position of all the players. So it's something like that. And uh, the deviate, I mean, the deviating player high, when it uses, we use beta instead of alpha high, so literally has as previously, the states x high is going to be this one. And here, there is one important, one main difference. First of all, of course, how the state processes are going to move. And importantly, the value of alpha j can be modified even if player j does nothing because has the map depends on the, on the position of the player so naturally, even if uh, all the players stay at the same, use the same map, there is a move over, over the controls. So there is, I mean, there are a lot of moves in the situation, a lot of moves in the situation of closed uh, loop. And naturally, you can imagine that as all the controls, all the controls are going to move, naturally the empirical distribution, as we consider the empirical distribution of state and controls, there is many additional moves that happen 
in this uh, situation. For a more thorough explanation, we can refer to the book of Kamuna in the world. So that is uh, what I mean by open loop and closed loop. I mean, it's, it's just a quick reminder. I think many of you know that, but uh, it's good to have, to, to, to have all the same thing in mind, what I want to talk about. So that's the, the framework I'm going to consider here. So naturally, when we put ourselves in this kind of framework, this is related to the main field game. So here in this talk, I, the, I mentioned when I start, I start this talk, I'm going to investigate this notion, but especially closed loop case when capital N goes to infinity. And the thing is, I mean, we want to talk about uh, convergence, but what it means to investigate how to be related when capital N goes to infinity, there are two ways to understand that. So first of all, I'll start with a sequence of uh, approximate Nash equilibria. And I want to know if uh, this sequence, when uh, the number of players goes to infinity, this is related to the main field game. That is one part. There is also the other part, which is the converse convergence result, it is. So I start with the main field game solution. And I want to construct an approximate Nash equilibrium. So when we say convergence, actually is this, I mean, it's referring to these two situations, these two kind of thing we want to do. So, so when we say convergence is this, uh, this uh, with both uh, situation we want to investigate. But here, I mean, I don't have time to deal with all of this. So I will only essentially focus on the, conver the converse convergence results. That is to say, so in an appropriate framework that I'm going to define in the next slide. Given the solution on the game, we are going to give some precision about what we mean by solution on the game, of course. And from this one, we are going to construct an approximate closed loop Nash Moya for the end player game. So that's the situation we put ourselves. That's what we are going to do in this talk. So let's talk about uh, quickly about uh, the definition of infinite game. So there is many ways for defining a mutual game. Here I just uh, put one slide in order to, uh, I mean, it's more like to, everybody can see the notation uh, and this kind of uh, classical uh, way of presenting this one. So what I will call a minfield game uh, solution will be a control. I mean, it's kind of uh, completely, in my situation here, it's kind of completely equivalent to consider, to call the control, the solution, or the distribution, the solution. So most of the time, sometimes, I will refer to the distribution for the solution or the control for the solution. So a control like we will be called in the game. So first of all, there is optimization problem. So it's this one. And there is the fixed point. It's kind of a natural and kind of statistic. So I don't want to take a lot of time here. The main point here is why we call it strong is essentially because first of all, the control consider first of all the, the initial position and the brain motion. And more and importantly, the, the equilibrium distribution mu here is adapted to the common noise. As we are going to see, there is some situation we need to extend the filtration of the common noise to be able to treat all the possible limits of Nash Kimmeyer. So as usual, there is also the PD formulation. Here, I just I consider the very simple situation. Anyway, in this talk, I'm not going to talk a lot about the PD formulation, but just uh, 
just in case, or just put it. So there is uh, the classical AGB in Fokker Planck equation. Of course, there is a much more general formulation using the master equation, but I'm not going to talk a lot about that during this talk. So just a quick uh, thing about the literature. So I mean, I believe all of you knows a lot about, I mean, all of the people I just mentioned here, I quite uh, know in the, I be, um, during uh, the last, uh, I mean, the previous talk here, there is uh, many, uh, many uh, auto have been seated during this uh, workshop. I just want to mention one interesting work uh, uh, regarding um, the mean game of control, especially the convergence results. Um, for the convergence results about uh, mean game of control, there is not a lot of literature. I mean, personally, I don't know a lot of literature about uh, the case of mean game of control. But there is one paper I find quite, I mean, there is some paper I find quite interesting, especially the work of Laurier Tengpi and Posamay Tengpi where they talk about the use of an interesting result, an interesting uh, techniques uh, of propagation of chaos. Uh, they, they call it, I uh, believe, uh, backward propagation of chaos. It's uh, the, the very, the very nice technique to deal with uh, with the game of control and to use, uh, to provide some convergence results. And uh, they are able also to provide some rates of convergence without, I believe, without using a master equation. So it's kind of possible to give a rate of convergence without, without uh, making use of a master equation. And, but uh, in this talk, there is uh, especially one paper that's very related to what I'm going to talk about here. It will be the, the, the recent paper of, of them in the liquid flame closed loop convergence for mean field games with common noise. Especially in, in their paper, they, 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 they deal with uh, convergence uh, for Nashville Maria in the framework with, with, uh, common, with common noise, of course, but no, but no, no law of control. And uh, the, I mean, there is some, there is a tricky part about uh, the converse convergence result where the need to add some additional noise to be able to actually deal with the, the convergence issue. And uh, this uh, converse uh, convergence result, it's, uh, I mean, according to the paper, they said it's kind of a, a difficult uh, result to prove. And during this talk, especially at the end of this talk, I will try to, in a particular situation, how we can overcome the difficulty appearing in the, in the case of uh, converse convergence. So it, I, I will make a lot of reference about this paper during the, during the talk. So, I mean, since the beginning, I talk about convergence and um, convergence of Nash equilibria. Mathematically speaking, what I mean by that? So let's talk about that. So. And I want to characterize, as I said in the, in the beginning of the introduction, I want to characterize how the possible limit of approximate Nash's minimum. So, I mean, abstractly speaking, what I'm interested here is this kind of set. So it's the set of all distribution coming from the empirical distribution of the Nash equilibria. So I want to consider to try to understand what is this set in fact. And naturally, this kind of set, given the relationship with the mean field game, we are also going to consider what is going to what is what this kind of set is like. So the closure the closure in a weak sense of all strong mean game solutions. So this set and this set are mutually related. And what I mean by convergence is especially try to 
understand this uh, this set, and naturally it's also related to this set. So the main the the, the main I mean mathematically mathematically speaking is really try to understand this set. So natural as I, I uh, as I mentioned, so we want to find this space E such that this one will be equal to this one. And the, the, the main question will be, what is this set E? What, uh, what is this shape? How we can define it? How we can deal with it? All of this kind of stuff. So that's the main goal, in other words, of this talk. And it's this, this kind of uh, 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 old way of doing things in uh, stochastic control theory. I mean, I, I believe there is a, many work about uh, this type of thing, but uh, a paper I find quite interesting in, the, I mean, all you need to know about compact, I mean, almost all you need to know about compactification methods can be found in the paper of El Kari, again, in Jean Blanc. It's from uh, 1987, it's an old paper, I mean, older than me, but uh, it's a very quite, Interesting paper, and uh, I mean, it's kind of this is is very interesting. And the thing is, most of the time, I mean, people used to think that uh, this kind of method are quite uh, general and too abstract. But the thing is, there is, there, is I mean, there are many interesting results you can prove with this approach, especially existence of optimal control. You can prove a dynamic programming principle with very general assumptions over the question. Sorry, so what I was saying, uh, so there is a many interesting things you can do by using this kind of approach. At first, it seems too general, but uh, there is very uh, many concrete results you can prove with this type of approach. I don't have the time to talk about it, but uh, it's kind of, uh, Quite, I mean, this technique has results. So, so now I'm going to discuss what are the what I mean, what can be the set E. So, first of all, there is a, a very well known result of uh, Carmona de la Liquor about the weak formulation. Actually, the term weak, if I follow the, the framework of the Karin again in Jean Blanc. Normally, I will call it a relaxed formulation, but uh, in the paper of Carmen and the Larry Likers, they call it weak formulation. The formulation I present here is not uh, the one they use in the paper, but it's actually the same. And what uh, the, I, mean, I call a weak formulation will be a probability distribution. Here it will be the image of this uh, measure mu. Well, the this tuple, where well, the first one is probability space, F is a general frustration, and G here will be the, the what we play the role of the common noise. P will be of course the probability over the space. X will be the process which will be the optimal solution. Lambda here will play the role of the control that is not here later. So W, of course, will be the brain motion, the idiosyncratic brain motion, and B will be the common noise, and mu, of course, will be equilibrium. So there is some, uh, this uh, is a very technical aspect about uh, this. Uh, I mean, it's kind of to very understand uh, each point of this definition is kind of very technique and uh, I don't want to detail all the points. So here there is the equivalent of the previous optimization problem, and here is a fixed point. There are two main points in this definition. First of all, the, the, the main difference is it's about the filtration of controls and the filtration of the optimal distribution new. So we need if we want to be able to go to the limit in the weak sense I mentioned earlier, in some, in some way we need 
to enlarge the filtration of control and the filtration of the optimal distribution. So here mu will not only be measurable with respect to B, but, but there is a, an additional of extra noise you need to consider. And there is also an additional noise over the control you also need to consider. We need, I mean, additional, we need to enlarge the filtration of the control too. And uh, I mean, when you we start to enlarge filtration, you have to be careful because uh, there is some uh, some strange things that can happen. But why there is some H hypothesis to consider? I'm not going to go into details about this H hypothesis. It's, uh, I mean, it's kind of a tricky to and even to explain to a probabilistic guys. Sometimes it's complicated. So I'm not going to go into details about that. When you are going to enlarge filtration, you need to be careful because there is some compatibility you have to, to, to consider. So of course, this is kind of uh, tricky, but uh, I'm not going to go into detail about that. So there is a paper of them about uh, the fact that all the possible limits, you can characterize the, the, the set of the Dash equilibrium using this kind of a quick solution. But the thing is, I mean, given the, if you remember what I just presented, so I, I, I want to, of course, I want to characterize this one, but I also want to characterize this one. So the question is, okay, it is uh, this one corresponds to the set of all the possible limit of Dash equilibrium. But it, it will be also nice to know if, for instance, I take a sequence of multi game solution. I mean, what is, what is the limit of this sequence? So, do we have this one equal to uh, all the possible, I mean, all weak solution have the closure of uh, all strong multi, I mean, the closure of all strong music game equilibrium. Actually, it's, it's true. And to talk about that, I will consider a kind of, uh, I mean, first of all, I mean, in, uh, if you think about uh, the weak solution I just uh, presented here, there is one tricky part I mentioned, which, which is uh, the H hypothesis. And it's kind of a tricky, and uh, I mean, it's kind of a pain to deal with. And there is, a nice way to, to avoid using this, and that will allow us to answer this question. So, as we, as we, all, we all do, we consider approximate Nash equilibrium. So, why not consider, I mean, why not introduce also approximate Milfin game? It's kind of natural. So, natural, I mean, the, the natural notion of approximate. Nash equilibrium will be as follows. So I call this one an epsilon multi game solution. If, first of all, there is the optimization part. But here, instead of having the supremum, I will have a small error I can, I can admit. And uh, the fixed point is as usual. So this kind of solution, which is, and personally, I found it quite uh, natural. And this kind of solution allow us to actually avoid talking about weak solution. Because first of all, I mean, there is a result. So approximate milfi game are equivalent to weak milfi game in the sense that if I consider a weak milfi game as I just uh, defined, the limit will be, I mean, the I mean, any milfi game, any weak milfi game will be the limit of a sequence of approximate milfi game solution. And conversely, any sequence of approximate uh, milfi game will be a weak solution. So as a result, E is a set E is, uh, I mean, all the weak solution is, uh, is actually the set E I'm looking for. So I recall the set E is, uh, so the limit of all possible equilibrium and also the limit of all possible 
means strong military game equilibrium. So I agree with this result, we can in, in something close the, the box and uh, we have complete. So all the weak solution introduced by Carmonel, Delary and Laker actually answer the question about uh, the convergence in the case of open loop. And actually this definition of approximate uh, military game is kind of useful. For instance, uh, there is a recent paper of Zeri and Zeng, Jianfeng Zeng, where they deal with, uh, with the use this kind of uh, definition of approximate military game to provide a dynamic program in principle for, I mean, for the master equation, the set values. It's, uh, it's because here in this kind of situation, of course, there is no uniqueness. So your master equation, the, the, the value function is not well defined. So what they did, they consider set of values and they are able to provide a dynamic programming principle results. Also, they can deal with uh, some convergence problem. So what, what I want to, to say, it's, it's kind of uh, useful tools to try to provide some interesting results, this uh, notion. So here I, I, was, I, talk, I talk about Nash uh, Kimuya. So naturally, what about the control of this stuff? Over what we can call it closed loop and if game solution. So there is uh, the notion of uh, Laker on the in the case where the diffusion coefficient is constant, sigma here is constant. So what they call a mean field game or a weak semi Markov mean field game will be something like that. Where there is, I mean, it's no longer a process, but now it is a map, the time or state and the distribution. And uh, so there is a fixed point, there is optimization. And one of the main points here, so the common noise is no longer just a B, but it's also, there is also new, so there is an extra noise. And uh, the, one of the results, the proof, so under convexity assumption of a B, the weak solution, the weak semi Markov milf game and weak, weak milf game introduced earlier are equivalent. And to give an idea of the proof, the idea is just to, to take the control and to project the control of the X, U, and B, thanks to the convexity assumption of B. So it's something like that. So if there exists a map here, like that, we can have this kind of equal equality. And the map we found here will be actually the weak semi Markov in field game. And we can define process Y like this. That is actually the, and the proof is, it's, uh, I mean, that is the main idea of the proof. But the thing is, uh, the, the complexity assumption is, uh, I mean, what I, I mean by it's no longer useful, it's the fact that some, I mean, sometimes it's no longer useful in the, in the sense that in the case of mean field game of controls, for instance, even if you can project your control over X, mu, and B, you cannot recover the, the law of control. So in, in actually, it's kind of quite unnatural because you do a projection, you, you project over a set. So naturally, you lose some information and you cannot actually recover entirely the law of the law of control. So in the case of major game of control, using a convexity assumption, so this kind of technique is no, I mean, cannot work. I mean, there are some specific situation where you can still use this kind of technique, but uh, generally speaking, it's no longer work. And in the, in the last part of the talk, I will try to show how we can go behind this, uh, this kind of uh, convexity assumption uh, in the case of the game of control. Just to talk about uh, the heuristic derivation of the convergence result. So the main idea is first, uh, we start with an infi game solution like this. And the next step is to try to construct a national layer networking processes like this. And the, the last part is to show that 
the total we construct here is actually an approximate such embryo. So first of all, define the, the, the error you committed here, and you are going to show that this error will go to zero, to, to put it simple. So define like this, first of all, it's obviously positive and verify this condition. And the main point is to show that this one is also non-positive, so it's equal to zero. That is, and it is kind of classical, so I'm not going to talk longer, longer about this one. So now I'll talk about uh, the main issue about this closed loop. I want to mention the, the, the work of Laker and Leflin, what they do, and uh, where is the tricky part. So we start from, like, like I mentioned the previous slides. So the idea, so you start, what they do is in the case of different coefficient constant. So you start by a semi Markov mean figure like this. And as you, the construction is like this, so it's kind of natural. So you define uh, if uh, I leave ah. this interacting uh, decision. The main point is here we can see that U and D are fixed. fixed and you define this, uh, this uh, processes and uh, the result the post is uh, this empirical distribution converts to new, which is uh, the game solution. And uh, this tuple is actually a S closed loop approximates Nash equilibrium with an approximation that goes to zero. And what is S closed loop uh, approximate Nash equilibrium? It's uh, so it's uh, the, the classical notion. The, 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 there is, but there is an additional noise, which is here describing by the couple mu and b. And the couple mu and b, they call it S. So you need to be able to construct an approximate Nash embryon. You need to add an additional noise to your problem, to your framework. But of course, naturally, we want to avoid this kind of uh, additional noise. Naturally, we want to replace this by this one by mu n uh, here, so by the empirical distribution. The thing is, it's kind of a tricky to do that here because in this framework, you don't, you have no idea about the regularity of alpha. So if, I mean, formally speaking, of course, we can replace, but uh, don't know where the limit is going to be. So to overcome this kind of situation they, they need, in the framework, like on the frame, they need to fix additional laws and they show that this one is actually an approximate national linear. So the, the natural question is, can we avoid to use this additional noise also, in the framework, they need to consider some convexity assumption, but as I mentioned briefly, uh, convexity assumption in the game of control, I mean, this is kind of, uh, sometimes it's kind of useless. So can we avoid to use convexity assumptions? And in the case of, of military game of control, can we show that uh, this one will be, uh, can be, will, can, I mean, it is possible to apply this uh, technique in the case of this game of controls. So there is a, this kind of an issue we, we want to overcome. Also, there is an approach from Prism and P using the BSD techniques. But uh, here, I'm not going to really use this kind of approach. So in the rest of the talk, I'm going to try to show you how we can actually replace, if I can put it that way, new and B here by the empirical distribution. So to do that, you need in some sense, some approximation of this type of uh, infigent solution. So in other words, what we need to do, we need, I mean, it's, it's kind of equivalent to start from this kind of control or this kind of, because of the, the, the approximate uh, infidium of control result, we can start from this kind of control. 
So we start with this one, and uh, the main idea in our work is, as I said, we want to regularize, want to regularize the control here. So we want to be able to approximate this one by this type of control. In, 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 uh, to put it simple, I want to approximate an open loop control by a closed loop control, to, to, to put it simple. That is something I want to do. And the main point I want the, this map alpha here, if I help, to be regular, to be much ideal. So the result, uh, I thought it's, it's, it's actually possible to, to do that. So it's possible there exists a map like this that uh, solves the question. I'm going to talk about the, the proof of this one during the, the, the 10 minutes I have left. Um, okay, so we are going to prove that uh, there exists actually a map, which is a loop sheet, and uh, this one converts to the limit here. So how to do that? Just use the Foucault plant equation, I think. First of all, in the case without common noise, you can notice that we should write Foucault plant equation, the read formulation here. I mean, okay, for instance, you can apply it as formula and take the expectation if you want. So here we have, so the, the solution, the limit is something like that. And what I did not hear is the kernel, the kernel of the, the distribution new bar. So if you think about uh, the case where the control is actually closed loop, the, 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 the kernel is, will become a, a, a drag measure. So in some sense, I want to be able to approximate the distribution like this by a sequence of, uh, I mean, direct measures, put it simple. And uh, I mean, if you are comfortable with young measures, the young measure in topological space, there is a well-known result about uh, this type of thing when uh, the, the measure is fixed. In this, we have, you take this kind of measure with uh, the marginal over the space E is uh, fixed is, and non-atomic. We have this kind of approximation that exists a map, which is uh, more measurable such that, I mean, there is, the map can be regular as, as we, we want actually, such that this one converts to this one. So we are going to use this result in, in this situation. How we are going to do that? We can notice, you can notice here that the marginal is fixed, but here the marginal is not fixed. But actually it's not uh, kind of uh, difficult. There is something fixed here. It's the side that this one, this measure is actually has a density with respect to the Lieberg measure, which is the case of also this one. So we are going to use the I mean, some kind of distribution of, uh, I mean, the Lieberg measure are the fixed measure, but it's not entirely true, but uh, something like that. So we take a density, verifying some kind of uh, regularity here. And we construct, we use this lemma with uh, this uh, marginal distribution. So we have this convergence. And we are going to use the map we are construct to show that this solution we define here will be actually the sequence that are going to converge to the limit this one. And how we do that is actually kind of quite simple. First of all, I mean, I, uh, first of all, there is an estimate over the density of uh, this type of equation using the result of Aaron sum and Serine. There is, we can have, we can uh, control the, all the norm of this uh, density. So therefore we know that using Ascoli theorem, you know that there is, this, uh, there is a limit in this, and uh, on each compact, there is a uniform convergence. And we are going to show that F infinite here, it's actually the density of this distribution. In this kind of, with this result is kind of easy because first of all, you can, with uh, some uh, computation, we can show that actually this one converges to this one in the weak sense. It's kind of uh, easy to do that using essentially the compact, the, the, the fact that there is a, 
convergence, the uniform convergence on each compact and uses also this property. And second, you just, we are just going to go to the limit in the focal point equation. So we go to the limit in, the fo in, in this, uh, in this focal Planck equation. So, and when we do the approximation here in this focal Planck equation, we go into the limit. And therefore, we find something like that using especially this one in converge weekly. And by uniqueness, we can prove that this one is actually this one. So, therefore, we are showing that this one is converged to this one in the such time distance. So, I mean, in the case, now we are going to apply this result in the case where there is a common noise. It's actually kind of a classical technique. I'm just going to shift the initial short process. And uh, so we apply the, the previous result in the case of uh, common noise. And we are, we are, it's possible to show that there exists a map this piece and piecewise, actually, we can regularize this map as we want, as, as much as possible. And uh, so if there exists a Lipschitz and piecewise constant map such that this one actually converge to this one in the vast term distance. So all we, we are left to do now is to try to remove, I mean, we are almost done if you consider what I, I said previously. We are T, we are X. We know that the map is uh, Lipschitz. So now we just need to remove B in some sense. Then we are going to show that B actually map of all the distribution I mean, of the, the distribution you have. And what, why it is true is because first of all, I mean, if you think about there is a classical situation where you consider this kind of SD, well, gamma is Lipschitz and piecewise constant. I mean, it is well known that X is a map of W, but also W is a map of X. There is many ways to prove that. But uh, I mean, of course, uh, sigma is non-degenerate, of course. There is many ways to do that. You can do it by this mass transformation. But here, it is actually quite, it's quite simple. You can only, do, you can do it by, by recurrence, recursively. You can just verify that at each of, at, as the map is piecewise constant, we are just going to check that at each step, you can actually write this map as a function of X. And that is exactly the case we are going to do in the situation of our situation of interest. So here, if you take the conditional expectation with respect to B, you can show that this one is actually equal to this one. And there is B here and by, I mean, recursively, you can check that this one is equal to, is equal to this one. And this map, as the control is regular enough, the control is Lipschitz, you can show that this map is actually Lipschitz in the sense of for Wasserstein time distance. And therefore, recursively, you can show that B is actually the Lipschitz map of mu. And the, one of the main points is we have sigma zero, it's a uh, vertebral. And there is a question, I don't know. Yes, okay, uh, yes, I just finished, finished here. Uh, okay, so therefore there is, a, there is, I mean, the, there is this kind of result, so you can, uh, you can use the map alpha with uh, T and X, it's regular, it's regular in X and also regular in U. And we have this kind of result and therefore we can, sorry, so therefore we have constructed this one. So we are approach, we have, we, are, we, we were able to approximate the mean free game solution initially by this kind of control with here, an important feature is alpha is uh, actually the kids. And with this map, we can now construct our approximate uh, Nash equilibrium. And therefore, we, are, we can show that this one is actually a closed loop Nash equilibrium. I think I overstepped my time, so I'm going to stop here. And thank you. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Fabrice, for your nice talk. Uh, do, do we have any question here or on Zoom? Thank you, Fabrice.
Um, I'm curious if you can if you can explain what um, non-degenerate noises you need for these arguments to go through. Yes, the assumption and consider is essentially this one is non-degenerate, of course, and the uh, Lipschitz in X in the space. And this one is also non-degenerate. It's the two assumptions I need. For the, the, the main point, as you can notice, the main point is this, uh, in the, I mean, for this, uh, this inequality for Aaron, Aaron Stone and Serene. It's uh, the place where I use it, essentially. And, uh, and after, I use also the non-degeneracy of sigma zero for showing that B is actually a map of uh, mu. I see. So the sigma zero is not to use these young measure approximations, which need something to be non-atomic. This is for a different purpose. I think your question, I mean, for the young measures, it's actually, uh, it's, uh, I mean, I, I know my, uh, I mean, the application of the young measure is actually with uh, the density I choose. So I have uh, the approximation and after that, I, I have to check that uh, the approximation I construct is actually uh, good enough is to do what I want. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, maybe another question from Pierre. The question of Pierre is uh, in which extent can you relax the assumption on sigma zero that it is constant? I didn't think about that. Uh, I don't know actually. But, I mean, it's quite helpful that uh, sigma zero is constant. Beyond that, I don't know for now. Uh, actually, I don't know. Okay, thanks. I was just curious because I, I always assume that sigma zero is constant and it's so much convenient, but probably yes, it's yes. not optimal. Okay, uh, let's thank Fabrice again.